Hello, everybody. Hello. We have a child-free day. First time since Holly was born. It's We've amazing. got this whole day, just the two of us. You never guess what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. We're heading over to Ocean Melody. We're going to work on the cockpit enclosure. We've got with us in the back of the car the solar panels, some uh, pers uh, um, polycarbonate, Lexan, Macrolon, you know, for the windows. Not enough to do the, all of them. We've got some trim, we've got screws, we've got nuts, we've got bolts, uh, we've got stuff to do the aft cabin. And. Um, We're being passed by one of my old crewmates. Yeah, it is actually <laughs> one of my old crewmates. But yeah, what I was saying, we're never going to guess what we're going to do. Boat work. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to do. We're not boat going work. on a date or anything. No, no, don't. We don't get things like that. <laughs> See you at the boat. We've got some butyl rubber, rubber sealant, flexible, waterproof and durable. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. I'm guessing it's from the butyl man. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, Thank you very much. That's amazing. Thank you. So now we've got the solar panels down the pontoon. The first thing I've got to do is remount these, if you remember that I made, which are to secure the solar panels down. So I'm going to leave these on here for the moment, uh, drill and bolt these in place first. And we're, again, we're going to dry fit it all to begin with. And then when we're certain it all works, then we'll stick a flex and seal it all in place. So we've got these to go on. And we bought the dome head button head I think they're called, um, bolts to bolt them down with nylocks, with washers and uh, we've got also some dome head nuts which we haven't got here but we can put those on at any point uh, to stop if anybody catches their head on them it won't hurt them. So the first job is to get the drill, the drill bits and start drilling some holes for these. In between helping Andy outside, I've been in here scrubbing the ceiling. So if you remember some episodes ago, Andy did all the walls. Um, I've just cleaned the ceiling and I'm now going to insulate that, ready to start putting the cabin back together. Right, so as you can see, we've got the solar panels on, but now we need to take them back off again because I've got a sicker flex under all the brackets to make sure we don't get any drips. So that's the next job. Put them all on, take them all off, sicker flex and put them all back on again.
we're just putting the a washer oh, and a nut uh, on the other side of the solar panel um, bolt, pin, pivot, point thing. Um, and it's really, really awkward. It is. But um, do bear in mind, it's extremely rare that we'll have the panels up like this. We're only going to have them angled up towards the sun uh, on the very rare occasion when we've got the sun in exactly that direction. Most of the time, they're just going to be in the down position. Um, and uh, when we're at anchor and the sun happens to be coming in at the right angle, then we'll go, oh, uh, we'll lift the, put the panel in that direction. It'll be yeah. get a few more watts out of it. And it's really, really cold. It is really cold. <laughs> Nice. So, as people have pointed out before, yes, the boom is going to shade some of these panels. So we're going to have them on separate MPPT controllers. Uh, and when the sun's on this side, we'll just literally move the boom across like this. We could take it all the way out on a, present, on a preventer. We've got it on a preventer, just not very far. Um, and then when we want to get underneath it to clean it, we can lift it up. I'm going to put a gas strut on it. <laughs> Demonstrate that, Melissa. Can't get my yeah, fingers under I know, it. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. So you can just lift it up to clean underneath it and there'll be a gas strut or even two. And there'll be, of course, a mechanism for holding it down to stop the wind getting underneath it. Um, but that mechanism to stop the wind getting underneath it actually doesn't need to be very substantial because the grab rail stops wind getting underneath it. But so we will make sure it's over engineered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like everything I build, it will be uh, slightly heavier than you would like and a bit more over engineered than it should be. But that's just the way I do things. Now, the next thing I want to do is change all of these nuts and bolts, which are hexes for the dome heads, uh, just because they're prettier and they're nicer. And if you stub your toe on them, they don't hurt so much. And then we've got some plastic sheeting in the car uh, to, to start, start looking at the windows and the, uh, the, the other parts of the enclosure. I'm not wiring this in in this episode. I'm not, I'm not turning my mind to electrics. Um, that's, uh, my brain has to be like in electrics mode before I can do that. And my brain's not in electrics mode today. It's in fit the flipping thing mode. You may or may not know, but I am actually profoundly deaf. I was born with no hearing at all. So when I was 17 months old, I had an operation to have cochlear implants fitted, and each year we made a trip to London to have them checked, which is what we did this week, so boat jobs had to pause for a few days. Hey, we're in London, and I've just been to the hospital yesterday to get my ears checked. Everything's all right. We're at the Royal Maritime Museum. We'll have a look round. The building you can see behind me is the observatory of Greenwich, where the Prime Meridian is. Today was awesome. After having my cochlear implants checked at Great Ormond Street, we headed to the National Maritime Museum, and let me tell you, it was incredible. The museum's been around since 1937, and it's all about boats, ships, and seafaring adventures. We saw everything from ancient navigational tools to epic model battleships. There was a huge model of Nelson's ship, the HMS Victory. Plus, we learnt about the famous explorers like Captain Cook and Sir Francis Drake. It was like stepping back in time and setting sail on a grand adventure. I can't wait to come back and explore more. This section is all about working in the polar regions. Maritime Museum, we had one more really important stop to make before heading home. Welcome to the Greenwich Meridian, a line that has shaped up the way we measure time and distance. Established in 1851 at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England, it was here that the world came together to define the Prime Meridian, the starting point for measuring longitude and the foundation of modern navigation. For centuries, sailors relied on the stars, but it wasn't until the Greenwich Meridian's adoption that a universal standard emerged. 
it became the reference point for Greenwich Mean Time, setting the pace for global timekeeping and revolutionising travel, trade and communication. Today, the Royal Observatory stands as the beacon of scientific achievement, preserving the great legacy of minds like Sir Christopher Wren and Sir Isaac Newton. Visitors from around the globe come to marvel at the historic telescopes and explore the wonders of the universe. For my family, the Greenwich Meridian holds a special significance. It marks the starting point of our journey around the world, a journey where we plan to complete certain navigating the globe and returning to stand once again on this exact point, the Prime Meridian. Look at where we are. We are back in Hollyhead, which is where Steel Melody was for a very, 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 very long time. And the reason we're here is that um, a lady has offered to lend us a Sailrite sewing machine. Now, we've already been lent a sewing machine by Mark, um, a friend of ours who's lent us a big heavy duty singer. But we're going to be moving out of the house very, very soon in the next couple of weeks. So uh, the Singer sewing machine, whilst it's extremely helpful in the house, it's too big for us to take on the boat. So this lady is going to lend us a sail right and she doesn't want to be on camera, which is completely understandable, but we'll show you in a little bit all the bits and pieces that we're borrowing off her. I just want to interrupt the episode for one minute just to remind you that tickets are on sale now for my Come Back and Leave fundraiser concert, which I'm doing to raise money for our little sailing trip around the world. Uh, the gig is on April the 28th. So coming up in just a few weeks time at the Roadhouse in Sutton Coalfield. Now we've chosen the Roadhouse in Sutton Coalfield because it's fairly central in the UK. So whether you're from London or Cornwall or Scotland or Wales, it's relatively easy to get to. And we're doing the gig at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So you've got all morning to get there and then all morning, all evening to get home. So you shouldn't need to get a hotel. Uh, so we've tried to make it as easy as possible. Now the venue, the Roadhouse, have said that we can have the venue for free and they will just take the money off the bar. But the proviso is that we've got to sell a minimum of 100 tickets uh, and let them know that we've cleared that threshold uh, at least two or three weeks before the date of the gig, which is completely understandable. So they know they've got at least some revenue coming in off the bar. So if you are thinking about coming, and you're thinking, oh, well, we'll buy the tickets nearer the time. Please go ahead and get them sooner rather than later so we clear that 100 ticket threshold. There's only 150 tickets available altogether. That's the capacity of the venue. So go ahead and get your tickets now if you can. The, the link in the description is to Eventbrite, which is the website which we're using to sell the tickets. And there's a link in the description that links also on our Facebook page. So please go ahead and book your tickets now. For those of you that um, can't make it or you're in alternative countries and you know around the other side of the world and what have you, uh, we are hoping to do a live stream a paid live stream of the event, but we're only going to set that up once we've crossed the 100 ticket threshold. Uh, not quite sure how we're going to do the live stream. We'll have to look at the technological uh, stumbling blocks for that, but I'm sure it's achievable. So uh, go over to Eventbrite by clicking the link in the description uh, and grab your tickets for the event, which is at the Roadhouse on the 28th of April, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And it's going to be a whole load of music from Dire Straits, from Brad Paisley, from Eva Cassidy, from Joe Satriani, from all kinds of bands that I've played in over the years with some of my favorite musicians that I've played with over the years. So it should be a really, really good evening. And I hope to see you there. Back to the episode then now. As you may know from previous episodes, I've been having some issues in the sewing machine department. I got myself a secondhand Singer sewing machine, which I managed to change the um, broken gear on it. Um, however, since I've done that, I just can't get it to work. So if anyone's got any tips and advice, let me know. But in the meantime, I have managed to make this. This is Jack's mattress for his bed. And I did it on this beast here. This is a brother, I think. Let me double check. Yes, it's a brother industrial sewing machine on a ridiculously heavy table. Um, so thank you so much for, uh, to Mark and Jackie who lent me this um, to 
carry on with the upholstery because they knew I was having some sewing machine issues. This is amazing. Um, however, we are moving back onto the boat very, 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 very soon. And this would probably sink it because it's ridiculously heavy and huge. So another exceptionally kind person, Heidi, has lent me this. Which I am so excited about because I really want to buy one. And I can't afford one. So I'm excited to use this sail right. So the next sewing job that I'm going to test this machine on is the starboard side bunk in the aft cabin, which will be Ollie's bunk. Um, I need to cover the mattress on there. But first of all, I need to cut it all out. So that's all the pieces cut out and that's all I've got energy for tonight. We've been on the boat all day and it's midnight and I want to go to bed before Ollie wakes up again. Um, tomorrow morning I'm going to go back to the boat and hopefully continue in the aft cabin and then in the evening I will get some sewing done and I'll get this mattress made and work out how to use this machine. <laughs> Continuing on from yesterday in the aft cabin, I'm going to finish insulating the deck head. So that's the port side done and I thought um, I'd answer a question. <laughs> um, the mystery of the sheared bolts. In a few, a few episodes ago uh, Andy was working in here and he found all these sheared bo bolts and he was a bit concerned that they were part of the tow rail. On further inspection we realised that of course they're not part of the tow rail because the tow rail goes straight into solid fibreglass. These are actually the bolts that we use to hold Andy might do a diagram here, but to hold the deck um, supports down when for the teak slats to screw onto. So these were actually cut off on the deck level and then filled. Um, so it, it was used to sort of bow the, the support for the teak deck in to screw onto because the teak deck is not screwed into the deck of the boat, if that makes sense. So in short, these um, are not an issue at all. Um, they were just there and hadn't been removed, um, but they just needed pulling out. So definitely not where any water is getting in. Right, so that's the whole deck head insulated on both sides. So that should help with the condensation and keeping it a bit warmer in here or cooler in here, depending on where we are. Um, so there you go. I've left um, places to access uh, bolts and stuff that come through um, for the mast chain plates and things like that. But that is done. Now I need to cover the deck head. First of all, I need to get the old lining in um, and offer it up and see which bit goes where. I think Andy's marked on it when he took it down, but I'm not 100% sure. Right, that is 
that side, I think. And that is this side. Tell you what our new roof is really handy for, clipping the GoPro onto. Amazing. Loads. Um, I've got special carpet kind of spray that's good for foam backed that won't eat into the foam on the back. working on boats is like you've got to be a contortionist haven't you <sighs> that was awkward quite warm now um I've done one piece of, I've put one piece of the ceiling of the deck head up and here it is. I don't know if you can see it. So it's there. I've used the um, little stainless screws with little cups in. I think it's going to need some more um, joining points around here because it's a bit baggy at the front but there's places where we can drill into um but that looks loads better than this old plastic let me know what you think i'll get the rest of it done over the next couple of the um 
hopefully tomorrow, to be honest, tomorrow morning. Now I've um, got everything up. Yeah, so if you look here, this is gonna need some more screws and then it will need a little capping strip, which it needed before anyway, because the plastic was just flapping around. Um, but we can possibly run a bead of um, sick around there and screw it up or something like that. I think we've got some cool lights actually in, that the boys um, want, that the boys want, that Jack wants. So that deck head is a bit fiddly. Um, I've got quite a few more pieces to cover, which I will continue um, probably tomorrow. I'm gonna go home and take over looking after Ollie so Andy can come back here and do some boat work. And then this evening I will get on with some sewing. So that's what I'm going to do now, but I think you've seen enough of us for this week and the episode's already long enough. So come back next week for more exciting boat projects. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your comments, likes and support, especially patrons and everyone that's donated through Coffee and PayPal. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you next week.